Shalom, Shalom, Shabbat, Adonai. Welcome to the 6th Exodus program. Thank you for listening. Uh, in this segment, I want to tell you that um, this segment is talking about what happened in 70 AD. And the Most High tells us what's going to happen and uh, the destruction of the temple when Romans invaded our country and the Lord told us to flee into the mountains and what had to do when the abomination of desecration come into the holy place that means the Gentiles which are Romans come into the holy uh, holies it goes into the, uh, the temples of our forefathers in 70 AD. The Lord warned us these things. So I want to remind you what the Lord has said, the Most High. Um, I want to read to you Matthew chapter 24. I want to uh, read to you the entirety. And be patient with me. Uh, my eyesight is not good. I was blind. And my vision is just starting to come back. So my vision is not very good. And I'm still a cripple. So be patient with me with my bad reading. Because I can not see very well. I'm not going to say the name of the idol because I don't want you to be confused. We're going to say Christ instead of the name of that idol. Christ left the temple and was going away when his disciple came to the point out to him the buildings of the temple. But he answered them, You see all these do you know? Truly, I say unto you, they will not be left here one stone upon another that will be thrown down. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, his disciple came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming? in the end of the ages. And Christ answered them, See that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for these must take place but the end is not yet for nation shall arise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places all these are but the beginning of birth pains then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many of you will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. So when you see the abomination of desol desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, 
let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the one who are in the house, in the housetop, do not come down to take what is in his house. And let the one who is in the field turn not back to take his cloak. And alas, for women who are pregnant, and for those who are nursing infants in those days, pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, <coughs> excuse me, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human beings would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then, if anyone say to you, Look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray if possible even the elect see I have told you beforehand so if they say to you look he is in the wilderness do not go out if they say look he is in an inner room do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken then will appear in heaven a sign of the son of man and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of heaven to the other. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put out its leaves, so know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near. At the very gates, truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and given in marriage until the day of Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in a field. One will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill and one will be taken and one left. Therefore, stay awake 
for you do not know on what day the Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, the night of the thief was coming, he was have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Woe, when is the faithful and the wise servant whom his master has set over his household to give them their food? At the proper time, blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that wicked servant say to himself, my master is delayed and being to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with the drunkards. The masters of that servant will come on that day when he does not expect him. And at an hour he does not know. He will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gashing of teeth. I would like to continue reading if you don't mind. Matthew 25 chapter 25 then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom five of them were foolish and five were wise for when the foolish took lamps they took no oil with them but the wise took flax of oil with their lamps as the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry. Here is the bridegroom. Come, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for the lamp is going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. And the door was shut afterwards. The other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, if you know neither the day nor the hour. Okay, I want to skip over verse 31 when the son of man comes with his glory and all the angels with him then he will sit on his glorious throne before him will be gathered all nations and he will separate people one from another as a, sep a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will place the sheep on his right but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the f foundations of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. When the righteous will answer, will answer him, saying, Lord, 
when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he would say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed. And the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer, saying, Truly, I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life. This is very, very powerful because we are living in these days right now. This is happening right now. 2016. These are actually things happening today. The time is here. We are here. These are the days Listen to me. We as Hebrews, black Hebrew Israelites, we are in bondage. We are in exile in Egypt. The Bible calls Egypt, America, Egypt. But America has many names. Uh, they call them Chaldeans. They call them Babylon. But Hebrews... Uh, black people, uh, they have been scattered in 13 countries that I know of, 13 countries where black Hebrew Israelites are. They were sold into slavery from 1326 until 1912. They've been sold into slavery and we have been sold all over, all over the earth. And the world has accepted uh, the people in uh, our country now. They are called uh, Jewish. But it's okay because I have great consolation because of this word. This word has made me a wordaholic. I am a wordaholic. I love God's word and I get drunk off reading God's word and I read to you Matthew chapter chapter 5 um, well there was another segment this segment is Matthew 24 and 25 when the Lord said what things will come upon us in these last days you know what is so beautiful is that how God has such a great master plan. I mean, he is brilliant. I mean, a super genius. I mean, I love him. His word is so, I mean, so on it. He is brilliant. I, I tell you, he is so articulate and brilliant in his word I know he is God almighty this I know but the brilliance his brilliance I'm just astounded 
at his brilliance because I'm a man. Well, actually, I'm a worm. If you see me, you would agree. You would not even call me a man. You would say, yeah, he's a worm. Because the Lord has smote me and left me this way. But I believe he's going to heal me. And yet, I'm glad he afflicted me. Because had he not afflicted me, I would not know his laws. Nor would I have kept his laws. I would not have known I was a Hebrew because I was doing well. I, at least I believe I was doing well. I um, I had a good job. I was a nurse. And then I became a supervisor in four departments at a nursing home. And I was going to school at Mercer University to be a physician assistant to be an administrator in a nursing home. I love my job very much. And uh, and then I had married a foreigner, which is against the law for Hebrews to marry foreigners. And not only did I marry a foreigner, but she was a Buddhist. And this is marrying a foreign god. And so you cannot do these things. So the Lord smote me. And then on top of that, I bear the sins of my of my brethren and the Christians. And I bear their sins. So you would not want to see me. Now I want to I want to make some clarifications. I am not the Christ. I want to say some things to you that might blow your mind. But the Christ, the one who died for your sins, he is the most high. That's right. The Christ who died for your sin is the most high. And the person that the thing that you're worshiping is only a spirit of prophecy. It is the image of the beast. The thing that you call Jesus, the thing that you worship, it is the one that the Christ said, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. This is the thing that you worship and you praise and you go to churches to worship it. And it's a shame that you don't know. All these years you did not know who the Most High is. You do not know who He is. But read, read your word. Read the word of God. Where it says in Matthew 24. And He said all these things will come upon you. And He said even the very elect will be deceived. So that's why you're going to churches worshiping idols. The Lord says that you're worshiping the stock of a tree. Because a pitcher is, a, is made out of a tree. It's made out of wood. And you paint it. In the Bible it's called vermilion. You paint it with vermilion. And then you make crosses out of them. And then you wear them on your, around your neck. You see, children, we are in exile. And we have done the same thing our forefathers have done when they were in exile. They worship other idols. And you have backslidden tremendously. But I know, and I have been praying for you and interceding for you, that God will have mercy upon you when he returns. And when a separation comes from the sheep and the goats, that you will be in favor. I want to tell you this. I love you, my black people. All of you, you crackheads, you pimps, chicken heads, 
crackhead, dope heads, lust demons, whores, prostitutes, pimps, actors, singers. I love you because we have suffered so much in every civilization. We have been abused, killed, and murdered from the time we've been on the earth. We and our forefathers have suffered persecution from every side, from every direction. We have been persecuted from God. We have been persecuted from Satan. We have been persecuted from man. All, all has persecuted us. We have been we have been persecuted tremendously. And I say it's time for us to have a break and to enjoy life once and for all. We should have enjoy life once and for all. That we will have peace. That finally we will have peace once and for all. And not have any fear of being persecuted from God, from Satan and from mankind that hate us so much even if God would smote another nation that nation would come back and hold it against us and persecute us because God has smote them for their sins or the sins of their, their descendants because they do not want to be persecuted by God or to be corrected by God. So they will hold their vengeance against us. And persecute us. As they have done all these years. By selling us into slavery. And us being killed every day. Murdered in the streets. With all these great slaughter weapons in their hands. Guns and rifles. And bullets. Knives. Whenever they see a black person, and it's and it's very interesting because you have given us all these names, all these years, but you have never called us Hebrews. But you called us every other kind of name. You call us niggers. Call us Negroes. Call us Africans. And then now we are African Americans. But you have never called us Hebrews. But you will. You will call us Hebrews. Because we are God's people. And you say. Well we did not offend. Any black people. Whether they was. Descendants of Ham. Or descendants of Sham. They are all black people. And they counted us as dumb as nothing and they destroy us and kill us daily because they say well you and you offended the inhabitation of justice you offended God and so we're doing what God tell us to do by killing you because you offended God and your forefathers offended God by not keeping his laws and his statutes so you believe you are helping God. But these are the last days. And the Lord will come back. And the Lamb. And the Son of Man when he comes back. Oh the Son of Man. What he is going to do. Because the Son of Man. Lives among you. And you do not know him. Thank you for listening.